Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with War Thunder Ground Forces today, taking a look at patch 1.45. This is, of course, the introduction of American armor, and I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Really excited to test these bad boys out. I've played a couple of games, but I can't wait till we can get further down the tree. Although, right now, uh, they've only released rank 1 tanks, and I believe this grant is might also be available if you purchase through a web bundle uh, which I think is available at a discounted rate currently but um, anyways just taking a look at this tech tree first off uh, you're gonna start out with your M2A4 you can get a premium version of that which has a different uh, paint job it's more of an olive drab opposed to the brown color that we seem to have here uh, that's really the only difference uh, I think the stats are about the same because uh, it is the same model tank. Uh, you do have an M3A1 Stuart here. Uh, here you have the M3A1 US Marine Corps version. Uh, one difference with that, I can tell you just from looking at the model, is this has the original uh, riveted turret, and uh, it had issues with 50 caliber armor piercing. The rivets would pop back through into the crew compartment. You wouldn't want that. So what they did is they changed that to a rolled homogenous uh, version which you can actually see here on the Marine Corps one you can see the difference on the turret there so I don't know if they really account for that in game but that is uh, some history behind it if you're curious so there's that again otherwise they're gonna be about the same uh, the armor let's see if they've accounted for armor differences so yeah they're they're saying here that your your turret armor you're gonna get a little bit better turret so yeah it is an improved turret okay so they they are kind of accounting for it there so you're getting a better tank if you purchase this and the camo so there's that if you're interested in that uh and then the grant of course which is actually the british version of the lee because it has uh, a different turret on it the uh brits actually preferred having radios up here with the commander whereas the Americans would put the radios uh, down below in the uh, the bow gunner position or the uh, the sponson area so Brits put a different turret on the top with the radio up here and uh, you can actually use the 75 millimeter and 37 mil millimeter either together or separately I'll show you how to do that because you don't want to fire everything at the same time at least not all the time Okay, uh, on top of that, we do have an addition, I know, to the Russian tree, which is a bit disappointing because right now, even though the models are in-game, the Sherman is not currently playable, but you can play with it if, of course, you purchase a Russian premium, which is, of course, a Lend-Lease uh, Sherman tank, which I'm disappointed about this because, first of all, the Germans got a captured Sherman. Now the Russians have a Lend-Lease Sherman. But this is all before the Americans themselves even actually have a playable Sherman. Sad face times 10. Ah, I mean, it's one thing if the Brits were here. I mean, the Brits were, you know, some of the first to use the Shermans in North Africa. But this is just a little silly. But anyways, whatever. I can get over it. Um, you can preview some of these other models. We can even look at the M103. The models are in-game. You just can't unlock them currently because they need to be released in waves. So... There it is. You can look at the armor, the X-ray view. Now, I don't think all of these are finished. I think some of the models from the exterior and interior are incorrect. Uh, for example, I already found one discrepancy with the Jumbo Sherman, the M4A3E2, which is the up-armored Sherman tank. You can see it's got more uh, armor welded onto the 47-degree slope there, and, of course, on the sides as well. So look at the turret. Uh, and before I talk about it, I want you to know that my sources and references come from uh, R.P. Honeycutt's Sherman book, which is pretty much the rare definitive source material on Sherman tanks and American medium tanks during World War II, uh, as well as a book called Son of Sherman, Volume 1, which has pretty much every hull, turret, gun, headlight, every little part of a Sherman uh, and change made throughout the years. Uh, in it so on the turret for the m4a3e2 there was actually a, a notable uh, welding seam uh, on here you can actually even see it on the on the model in world of tanks for their jumbo but you would see that going around there that actually show the additional armor added to it so that's a little detail that i noted there otherwise the model looks great i'm still 
not sure about some of the color choices they're using. Uh, there are untouched color photos available of a lot of World War II equipment. In many cases, it's more of an olive drab as opposed to this brown. But in some photos, you'll also see that there was kind of a brown. So I think it differed um, by factory because obviously there were several different factories manufacturing uh, equipment for the United States. So I don't know too much about the color variants and a lot obviously a lot of the colors change when they hit museums and things but uh, we're usually used to seeing more of an olive drab but whatever I do prefer the OD but um, on top of that one thing I want to note it looks like Gaijin prefers the uh, the mud uh, guards on on a lot of their tanks um, I noticed that with American hardware for the most part even though in many cases, they would be shipped with these. Really, this these aren't armor skirts. They weren't there to protect anything. They were simply there to stop mud from flipping up and going up here and stuff like that. In many cases, uh, on the field, they would be removed by the crews because they made it more difficult to maintain uh, the tracks. So a lot of times, they would just dump them or they would get damaged in, 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 in combat and things like that, and they would just take them off anyway. Uh, I noticed Gaijin seems to leave a lot of them on. This is kind of minor. It's not a huge deal. One, for some reason, I like the way they look without them. But two, it would be kind of cool if there was like a little checkbox so that you could have your tank with or without them. Kind of like as a little personal thing. So if you go into customization and you can change the way your paint looks, it would almost be cool if you could also, you know, change the little things like that. And on top of that, I love their little t attentions to detail. Like they put like, you know, packs and things and the... Uh, uh, sleeping bags or whatever equipment on the back. It'd be cool if you could almost change some of that stuff out too in the future. Again, minor something for years in the future, but just little suggestions to Gaijin if they ever watch my videos, which they probably don't. But uh, you guys can share it. Go to the forums. Share. Uh, okay, so there's that. Some minor stuff. Uh, again, also too, thinking about the internals. I don't know if ammunition placement is accurate as well. Uh, keep in mind that Throughout the years, the Sherman ammo uh, stowage improved wet ammo racks and things. That's what the W stands for. A lot of the ammo moved to the floorboards, uh, and uh, they, they got rid of the ready rack ammo and a lot of the, uh, the Sponson ammo just because that was the thing that would cause them to explode and catch fire and all that. And that's not a good thing. It wasn't because of the gasoline engine like a lot of people think. It was because of the ammo placement and getting hit in the side. Okay, so get it right. Check your facts. Don't live off of Wikipedia, uh, History Channel, and uh, <laughs> poorly informed YouTubers. Go to accredited authors, books, read. All right. So anyway, there is that. Let's go into a test drive with this so I can talk about the machine guns. Now, the game has implemented machine guns, and you can use them together with your main gun or separately. You're gonna wanna use them separately. Okay, so here we are. 37 millimeter main gun available. All right, sounds kinda nice. Now you also have machine guns. You have, well, you have a lot of machine guns on these tanks, these early American tanks, more guns, right? But only two of them are firing right now. You've got one coaxial 30 caliber next to the 37. And then you have another 30 cal on the top, which on this tank shouldn't be firing because there's nobody back there to fire it. Now, in this one, and in many American tanks, they would always have another gun on the outside. On the Shermans, they would actually have an additional 50 cal on the top. And that was usable by somebody who would stand on the rear deck and uh, just sit there or stand there or crouch down, hide behind the turret, and fire that gun. But in this case, it's just firing on its own, which it really shouldn't because on this tank, there was nothing to link it to the internals to allow it to fire. And as far as I know, Americans never actually did that anyway. Now, I think some German tanks had linked MG42s to some internal trigger mechanism that would allow them to do that. But I don't think Americans ever did that, and they definitely didn't do it with this tank. Um, I, I tried to do some research on it to see if I was wrong before making this video, and I haven't found anything that states otherwise. Uh, if you want to correct me, feel free. But, you know, even as you can see with this model, it just doesn't make any sense. There's nothing linking the trigger mechanism to anything on the inside. That 
uh, bar there is simply a mount for the gun, and that is it. Um, so hopefully they change that, because this just looks really weird. It doesn't make much sense. I'm not even sure why they thought it was a good idea. But anyway, enough of that. Controls, please do this. Go to controls, tank control. All right, all of this by default is probably going to be linked to one button, your main mouse button for firing. You don't want that. You don't want to fire machine guns and the main gun at the same time. So separate that. Um, even you can separate your, your secondary guns here as well. Um, but your machine gun, set it to something else so that you're firing them separately. Also here, when we look at the grant, you'll want to set these to something as well so that you can fire each gun independently and use the same sighting system. So continue, go back. So again, by default, you'll be doing this and you don't want to do that. You want to be able to do this and then this. Okay. Uh, the MGs will be good to use against light armor. Uh, planes, open top vehicles, uh, anti-tank guns, so on and so forth there. I don't think there's an ammo counter. I don't see one. There's nothing at the bottom, nothing top left. Um, ammo will reload after a time, I think, but it seems like it's unlimited, and that can be kind of problematic. I've noticed a lot of people just firing non-stop and spamming it. Very annoying in-game. So let's return the hangar. And uh, now I'm going to go over to the Grant, which I don't own, but we can test drive it since it's a premium tank. So I want to show you how to utilize multiple weapon systems. So click here, test drive, OK. And uh, this is very important because otherwise you're going to be firing both guns at the same time and you don't really want to do that. Well, not all the time, maybe sometimes. So anyway, you can see there's an additional circle. That's my load indicator for the 75 millimeter gun. So you've got the 37 millimeter in the turret and the 75 Sponson mounted weapon there. By default, both at the same time, I believe. Now, sure, if something's close enough to you and you want to try to fire at, at it, you can go ahead and do that. But you have to keep in mind that the 75 millimeter is positioned to the you know to the right there and lower so it's not going to hit exactly where you want it to so what you want to do is go into controls again tank control and select primary weapon and select secondary weapon set that you can also do reset weapon selection so it's back to default um, but for now I've got it set to this and uh, that's going to allow us to use the same sighting system but for different weapons so right now we're firing both we're going to switch that up and right now I hit a button and I'm using the 75 millimeter gun. So we can range for this using this uh, reticle. Now if we want to change that, now we're back to the 37. Okay, so 37, 75. Back to the 37, using the same sight. Two different buttons there. Otherwise, if you're doing everything by default, you're gonna be firing both at the same time. Which, you know, um, you might want to do that sometimes, but I don't, I don't really recommend it. It just depends on your situation. If you're really close up to an enemy and you want to let them have it with both, that's a pretty good idea. But at range, you know, again, everything's going to gonna differ. And, and you're using different ammunition. It's going to have different velocities. And so it's best to fire them independently, especially at longer ranges. So there's that. You might want to check that for yourself. Uh, otherwise, uh, again, curious that this is on the American side since it's more of a British variant from North Africa, but it is what it is. And uh, we've seen certain planes and tanks that probably shouldn't exist on other sides before, so not really new to it. Uh, you can, of course, unlock this after you get the M2 medium. Yeah, still ugly. <laughs> but actually will be a lot more effective in this game than in World of Tanks since you can actually use both weapons. I wonder if you can use the MGs on this one. I can't test drive it yet. We'll have to see. But it will be kind of interesting. Might actually be fairly potent at the lower tiers. It really depends on what it gets put up against. Yeah, this tier could actually be a beast uh, because in North Africa when the British got a hold of 
uh, the Lees and turned them into Grants and things like that. They were happy to get American tanks. They were happy to get the Shermans because they loved the 75 millimeter gun. It had better armor. The insides were roomy. Uh, they loved the American tanks early in the war. Of course, later on, things start to change a little bit, but we won't get into that right now. So I think that about covers most everything. How about I actually play the game? I know some of you are just play the game, play the game, but you need to relax and enjoy the fact that I'm covering some of these things because we need a better educated community. So with that said, um, I will play in the reserve first off. Uh, currently, there are no simulator battles available. If I click that and hit to battle, I get this warning. So we have to go back and do realistic. I don't really feel like playing arcade. Here's the other thing. Okay. Um, currently, it's mixed. Americans fighting Americans. Americans fighting Russians and Germans and everything. Everything's mixed. It's basically arcade mode with some realistic battle components. It's a big cluster. I think they're doing this because they know everybody and their mother is playing American tanks right now. And it's the only way for Matchmaker to find opponents. People in the forums are saying that it's going to be temporary. I really hope so, because the patch notes don't say anything about it being temporary. So I'm a little worried. Um, please, Gaijin, don't make this permanent. It needs to be appropriate nations fighting each other. Americans versus Germans. Russians versus Germans. End of story. Um, it's just not going to work here. Arcade? Really don't care what happens there. It's arcade, right? Doesn't, doesn't seem to matter. Um, but this isn't World of Tanks, so... Yeah. Uh, beyond that, let's just jump into a battle. Of course, they've added the tow cable. If a tank is flipped over, you can assist it. Try to, uh, have it upright. Uh, they've added, uh, crew or repair assist. So if your buddy needs repairs, you can kind of go up to him and help with the repairs to speed it up. But it makes you immobile as well. Uh, artillery. They finally got rid of the cheater vision, which I've been ranting about since the beginning of time. Uh, I haven't tried it out yet. I think I finally unlocked artillery on this tank, so we can test it. I am still testing ammo types. Uh, this one currently has more penetration, but we'll see how that goes. I got a few extra here. And three respawns to battle. And we'll see how this goes. Keep in mind, a lot of people are playing this. Probably going to be a lot of machine gun fire all over the place. Oh, wow, look at all those <laughs> Yankees. All right, so artillery now. Here's artillery. Call for artillery strike is based on this uh, little map system here, which is actually the way it should be. Now, I still prefer that there wouldn't be an artillery like this for every single tank. Maybe for certain tanks, but not everybody should have it. But at least the cheater vision is gone. It's a step in the right direction. I'm at least thankful for that. Uh, even though I just, I don't want it at all, really, for these tanks. But, um, so you, I guess you just drop it and it, it's kind of like guesswork. Now, the problem is if the spotting system shows up the way it normally does, then it's still just as bad in a way. We'll have to see. We'll have to test that. I haven't done it yet because I just unlocked it. All right, I believe they've messed with uh, handling on uncertain terrain. So if you're driving over like mud or something, you'll probably slow down a little bit more, which is something that needed to be in. I don't know if it's perfect just yet. Like that guy had no issues climbing that hill. Um, most everybody has gone this way. So we're all grouped up there. We've got it. We've got some other people working towards Alpha, but there's not a lot of cover on that side. I'll tell you what's going to happen with me. I'm going to go into some cover. on the left and make my way up towards Alpha. Gotta be very careful with this tank though since it's so light you know that they're prone to flipping.
Now, the other thing I'm worried about with the introduction of machine guns is that people are potentially using them to test, uh, to find your location. So, for example, there we're getting hit through the trees because they can see our name tag. But now they have the ability to use the MGs to kind of uh, get a hit indicator. And if it shows hit from the MG, then you can fire and know that they're there, even though you don't really see them. I haven't tested it myself yet, so I don't know. For example, I'd be doing this, firing the MG. And if it says hit, then I know where he's at. But I'm not getting any hit indicator. So either he's not there or it doesn't work. But I think he's behind cover. So yeah, he's behind cover. I won't be able to hit him. Alright, so I'm going to move up to Alpha Point and kind of work on some defense here. I'm in the process of testing and doing commentary too, so I'm not expecting any miracles or too much damage. Um, let's see what we got here. There's some targets. I think those are bots though. Probably not going to do a whole lot. Oh, he stopped short. Yeah, that was a bot. Bring my elevation in for that target. This is going to switch over. This one actually has more velocity, I think. Alright, I'm not touching this guy, so I'm not going to waste my time on him anymore. Just a bot anyway. I'm just worried about getting hit by somebody on that left side. do is kind of cover myself a little bit here. Is that a dead tank in front over there? Trying to position myself a little bit here. The target hasn't been hit. The gun's been I think he's just on fire. We can still keep hitting him. Kill assist. Check left, check left. Oof. Problem is, I think I've got targets on the hill as well. Yes, I hit. And he's down with an assist. See, those machine guns are able to find targets as well, which is kind of a problem. I think, oh, that's it for us. Okay, we win. This guy behind me. Scaring me. Okay, so... Well, I'm definitely not the best, but... Um, Whatever. Did some assists there. I will take it. Yeah, a lot of people in RB testing out these tanks. All right, so uh, we can now get the M2. Purchase that. And um, normally I 
play simulators, so I, I generally put tanks in uh, a single a single slot uh, to maintain that crew, so I'm not, you know, spreading the crew out everywhere. Um, man, this thing is ugly. I mean, it's well made, but it's ugly. <laughs> oh boy, look at these 30 cal arms or uh, ears is what I meant. So we could, of course, try to use this. Uh, it's not upgraded. I do also have the... Uh, let's see. I do also have the M3A1, which we can throw in here. It's inexpensive to do so, so, you know, I don't really care. Why not? Uh, we can bring the M2 in. And the armor is going to be a bit more finicky with this one. So uh, we've got a little bit more protection with that. And then I'll probably play between the M3 and then the M2. But let's go ahead and do this up there. And we should be in pretty quickly there. All right. So I've gone ahead and transitioned us into another battle since I was having packet loss problems and I uh, had to exit the other game. And I didn't really want to sit around for four minutes and I wanted to play this tank. So let's see if we can head towards the objective. Perhaps follow this guy. So the M2 medium. An ugly tank if I've ever seen one. We will try to take into account its uh, sloped armor. And maybe cut through some of this uh, cover here. Again, this is RB, so we're having to deal with name tags. Those guys are going up that way. I'm going to take the low road just so I can maintain a bit more speed. Hopefully they'll cover me from that end. Now we want to be careful because uh, we don't know what kind of enemy we'll see. I'm trying to come around and maybe base camp or something. Keeping an eye on that mini-map. this guy shooting at? Looks like we're taking the objective. I think what we'll try to do is uh, maintain overwatch of the position and just defend it if we can actually take it. But there you can see there's quite a few uh, hostiles. Spotted. The main reason I hate RB is because you can see it through the trees. And we took some damage there. I was unable to fire.
Yeah, we keep taking a lot of turret fire. Really just using the uh, the MGs to define their locations, which is something that I was worried about happening in this game. Um. Gosh, I hate name tags. I really do. Getting some shots on target, but... God, these guys really gotta stop driving in front of me. That's a lot of red. Blasted those guys in the face. We're going to need to get closer. This gun's just not going to do it. This guy crept up next to an ally. That was just a bot, I think. So you can use those MGs to kind of feel out where they're at. Oh, we lost? Darn. Pretty intense firefight on that end, but yeah, it just didn't really go anywhere for us. So, I don't know if we really unlocked much of that, unfortunately, now. Yeah. Probably need to move up. A little bit more, but uh, let's see. We've got. Well, it's always a good idea. As much as I hate the fact that repairs and extinguishers are in the game, you gotta get them. I mean, everybody else is using them, so it's like just, just get them yourself. Uh, we'll research that and finish that up there. So that is, I think, going to be it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we were able to take a look at a couple of games there and uh, talk about the patch. I will, of course, provide more as I go through uh, this lineup. We'll probably focus a little bit. I might consider picking these up just because, you know, I got some Golden Eagles just chilling here. But I'm sure there's going to be more premiums. Um, so I might even just save it. But it might help to kind of get through some of these, even though rank one's easy to grind, so I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, this is probably going to pack a punch against quite a few of these tanks, so we'll see how that works. But with that, um, seriously, you know, get your opinions out there, hit the forums, uh, you know, defend what realistic and simulator battle should be, because that seems to be the current issue. There's just not enough focus on those modes, and uh, we really need more people uh, taking the time to share their knowledge and love for tanks and educate people from the ground up, you know, because there's just so much bad information out there, whether it's from a website or a YouTube channel. We have to let people know what these things are actually about, how they work, how they were supposed to work, and the tactics that go along with them. But with that said, I'd like to create a live stream event where the community is able to also 
uh, critique the title with me so that we can maybe write things down and submit that to the forums or perhaps Gaijin directly. I think that would be fantastic because I know there's a lot of knowledgeable individuals within my community. So, of course, with that said, stay tuned for a whole lot more Worth Underground Forces. I will definitely see you on the next one.